Okay, we'll get going. Uh, Mr. Hebblethwaite, um, when I was reading your biography, it seemed pretty light uh, on your experience as a chief executive officer. Are you in this mess because you don't know what you're doing, or are you just a shameless criminal? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and answer questions. Um, and actually, before I answer that question, can I start, please, with an apology? Um, actually, an apology to um, the seafarers that were affected on Thursday last week, an apology to their families, and an apology to the 2,200 of our employees who have had to face very difficult questions over the last week or so. Um, and you may see this as a late apology, and I just want to reassure you that the reason that um, you're hearing this, I guess, for the first time today is because I've spent the last week in the business talking to our people, one-to-one, -one, in Why person. Why didn't you talk to them in advance in a consultation, Mr. Hebblethwaite? Why apologise after you've sacked them all? So, the context of this incredibly difficult decision is that P&O has lost an unsustainable amount of money. And the reality is, and this is the backdrop that I would ask you please to bear in mind, is that we would have had to close the business if we hadn't. I'm sorry to interrupt. I have lots of businesses come to my committee and tell me that, but they all consult before they make their staff redundant. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah, Why not? So we thought long and hard about the routes to this, and we did consider every single option available to us, and we concluded that every single option available to us would result in the closure of P&O. And ultimately, and I haven't uh, had a chance, and it would be great to talk to you about what this actual new crewing model looks like, but it is of such a, it is a fundamentally different operating model, and no union could accept um, Did you ask them? our proposal. Did you ask the trade unions? No. Okay. In your letter to the Secretary of State, you said that you notified the relevant um, competent authorities in Cyprus, the Bahamas and Bermuda on the 17th of March. Is that correct? Yes. We heard earlier that that was in breach of your notification requirements to notify Cyprus within 45 days of the first dismissal and the Bahamas and Bermuda within 30 days. Do you recognise that? So not being a lawyer? Um, well, I presume you have access to lawyers, Mr. Of course. Hathaway. And, and, and we, we, we uh, are clear that we have not breached that law. Who did you write to in Cyprus? I will have to get back to you on Who that. Who did you write to in the Bahamas? I'll have to get back Who to you Who did you write to in Bermuda? Let me respond. Let did me you write. sign off these letters? No. Can you provide this committee with copies of them? Yes. Thank you. What's your salary, Mr. Hepplethwaite? My salary is a basic salary of £325,000. Do you have access to a performance-related bonus? I have access to two performance-related bonus. Um, a short-term incentive plan and a long-term incentive plan. Do you think Both you've increased or decreased the value of P&O ferries by your actions? I think that P&O was otherwise going to close and didn't have a future. And so if your employers are, might I suggest, mad enough to offer you a performance-related bonus, will you accept it or reject it? That is, I can't tell you how far that is from my thoughts. It's a thoughts. point of principle. Will you accept it or reject it? I don't know the answer to that. If we manage to save the company... As a decision for you, if I'm offering you a performance-related bonus and you've just sacked 800 people, will you, as a point of principle, say, I'm not going to take that? I don't know the answer to that. You don't I'm know not, the I'm not, I, I've got to be honest, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on saving the business and getting the 800 seafarers new jobs. Right. Uh, Mr Christensen, on the screen, please, from DP World, the owner of P&O Ferries. Are you going to sack Mr Hebblethwaite for gross misconduct? I couldn't imagine that we would do that, no. And did you sign off on these proposals? So, um, DP World has been informed on a continuous basis on the uh, situation in P&O Ferris, obviously, as the, uh, as the shareholder. Did you sign and off? We've also been, and we have, we have also been informed of the evaluations that P&O Ferris have had in terms of different routes to making this business viable and sustainable, and eventually also being informed and supporting the decision that was then eventually taken. Like 
It's, it's very strange, Mr. Christensen, because lots of other businesses in trouble follow perfectly legal routes, but um, you seem to be having no regrets about the decisions taken by your business. Um, uh, Mr. Havensworth, uh, did p and have a duty to consult the unions in good time over the redundancies pursuant to Section 188 of the uh, Trade Union Act of 1992? So there's absolutely no doubt that we were required to consult with the unions. We chose not to do that because we believe... You chose to break the law? Because we chose not to consult and we, will com and we are and will compensate everybody in full for that. I recognise that this is a really When difficult... you get in your car and drive down the motorway and you see the 70 mile an hour sign, do you say that that's not going to apply to me, I'm going to do 90 uh, because I think it's important that I do that? Is that how you go about your life? No. No, it isn't. 